I just want to start off with a big thank you to everyone who has subscribed. I never asked you guys to subscribe, but you did anyway. And I really appreciate it. My channel just hit 2,000 subs and uh, that's awesome. Way more than I ever expected. It's tiny in YouTube land, but I appreciate you guys watching. I really do. And it keeps me motivated to you know, keep, keep producing content for you guys. Today, I am at the slab which is just below the fishing boundary near Slessie Creek on the Chilliwack River. And one year ago, I came here with a couple of friends and we cleaned 1,000 hooks out of the river. I don't expect there to be that much today because uh, the floods really wiped this place out. The riverbed is completely rearranged. So there will be zero hooks left over from salmon season. There might be a few lures and hooks left over from steelhead season. And uh, yeah, so let's hop in the water and, and clean up a bit and we might see a steelhead or two, but they're really hard to get close to. The water is clear and as soon as they see me hop in, they're going to scoot over to the other side of the pool. And um, I, I really don't expect much more than a glimpse. I just want to say that uh, please, please don't hop in this kind of water if you don't have the years of experience to assess the risks properly. The, the swift water is a very unforgiving environment. Uh, you can get pinned under a log or next to a boulder. You can get uh, trapped in fishing line. It's all kinds of hazards. And yeah, I don't want anyone to get hurt. I have 20 years of whitewater kayaking experience and almost as many years of free diving experience. And even for me, I have to say it's a little intimidating. Anytime you get into water that's faster than you can swim, it's very hazardous and you really need to be calculated about uh, where you go and, and what risks you take. So that's enough talking. Let's get in the water and check it out. Thanks for watching. wasn't all that overwhelming. Maybe 12 feet of biz. Here we are on the seam. So the seam is the transition between fast and slow water. And you can see that wall of bubbles that kind of separates the two. A lot of times fish like to hang out here, but uh, there wasn't too much action going on here. Here you see that concrete slab that used to be standing up in the river here and it's now toppled over. That there is a resident rainbow. Pretty big for a resident rainbow in the better. This one might have been two pounds. So that's a hatchery fish that would have spent two years in the hatchery and probably another two, maybe even three years in the river. It's uh, unusual to see them this big. But that was about the only thing of interest here. I didn't find any cool fishing gear and I didn't find any steelhead. Had a little bit of fun playing in the current went back and forth a couple of times and then I moved on to the next spot. So here we are at the new location and this is where I found the steelhead. The GoPro is a very wide angle lens, so it makes all the fish look quite a bit smaller than they actually are. Here you see the first one and another. Yeah, there's, uh, that's, a, that's a rainbow and there's a steelhead and a rainbow beside him. A couple more steelhead. Yeah, these are all sort of eight pound fish maybe. Maybe some of them as big as ten. Uh, that's it. Moved on to a little bit of a cleanup. Found a lot of old beads and bits of lead. A couple of Colorado blades. It's good to get that lead out of the river. It is a potent neurotoxin. I'm actually kind of surprised they still let us use lead. The beads too. I really think we should be getting on the manufacturers to provide us with a plastic that's water-soluble over the long term. 
This year I found a couple of trout that had their digestive tracts plugged up by plastic. So if we had some stuff that after two or three weeks in the river dissolves, I think that would be awesome. The only really interesting lure that I found on this trip was a steelhead slammer, which is a kind of spinner that I used to, to good effect last fall for coho. And yeah, just a couple more shots of steelhead. Just glimpses, really. The only one that let me get nice and close was this spawned out steelhead coming up. It's this guy here. And that fish is finished spawning and it is so tired out that he doesn't really care that I'm there. So this fish might have been eight pounds when he came up from the ocean. Probably slimmed down to about six pounds now. And this fish may or may not head out to the ocean. Some of them get so tired they just die here in the river. But uh, hopefully he makes it out to the salt where the salt water should cure up that patch of fungus and he'll come back as a much bigger fish next year. After this it's just one more shot of a nice chrome 10 pound buck and that's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.